Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I want to talk about the first week of Indisputably Doris. I began my events for Indisputably Doris last Monday and I thought that I would talk you through some of the exploits and talk you through just what it is to be a touring independent author because it can be fun and it can be strange and it can be stressful. I just thought I should commemorate it in some way. Our first event took place at Sandbatch Library on Monday the 11th of September and I am really glad that I got to go to Sandbatch Library for the first event. This isn't the big launch party that I'm doing in Macclesfield. This was just to test the waters really, to see how people feel about Doris in the second book because as Athol mentioned, the comedy is different in this book and there's no shying away from it really. I also wanted to go back to Sandbatch because Sandbatch has offered me a lot of opportunities in the past with the first book. My first successful event was at Sandbatch with their readers group and they invited me back for an author panel with Sarah Ward, Catherine Green, Jill Hoffs and Amanda Brooke but they have helped me to build connections with other writers and then they, I also managed to get invited to a WI Christmas party for that where I read the Christmas monologue from the first book and I did a children's award ceremony where we talked about how we had been writing since we were children and how you can continue to write and so Sam Batch had given me a lot of opportunities and because of that I was glad that they were my first event. Sadly it poured it down with rain last Monday and so I knew that there was going to be a poor turnout. I am not going to lie there have been events that I did for Our Doris where I have arrived and there has not been a single audience member and this, luckily, I was at a library, a local library. I saw some of the volunteers I work with at the charity shop and I brought them over and offered them free tea and biscuits because sometimes that's all it takes to get someone to listen. I managed to get there by getting my driving instructor to um, begin the lesson at my house and then we ended it in Sandbatch outside the library because I wanted to get the last lesson in before my test. And so we arrived and we were an hour early. And so I went to Costa and had lunch. And I had four audience members, including Oksana, the librarian. And it was not the best event we've ever had, but I'm glad that I got audience members that interacted with me and we made it more of an informal chat, really. And that's kind of something that you are going to have to do if you are looking into going out and presenting your work anywhere. If you don't get the people there, you are going to have to figure out how you're going to work the room because sometimes, you know, it's nice when you can just orate to 40 people there, but sometimes there will only be a few people there. I think my friend Margaret said that the average is eight people. I was glad that I got to interact with people. I didn't necessarily, well, I, I didn't, I sold one book and I donated one to the library. It did raise some interesting points. And whilst I was reading, I discovered a mistake that has been printed into 150 copies of my book. So it wasn't all in vain. The worst part about that day, if anything, was getting the bus back. Because the bus didn't arrive until an hour after I'd finished me reading. And then got on the bus and I still had an hour until I got back to Macclesfield. And the next bus to my house didn't arrive for half an hour and I only lived 20 minutes away so I walked with 20 books in a rucksack strapped to my back I came back and I was just this giant mass of gelatinous fat and sweat um, so that prints a pretty picture for you next day we went to Poynton again had to hoof it to town with 20 books strapped to my back the bus that I thought I was getting didn't arrive for 40 minutes, so I nipped into the Macclesfield shop where I used to volunteer, got a free tea, spoke to me colleagues really, spoke to the volunteers I used to work with. We had a ball, invited them all to me big launch next week. And then I went off and I got me bus and I ended up in Poynton. And I was walking to the shop, turning into this gelatinous ball of sweat again. I was like, I need to stop for lunch, but I'm going to the shop. And I got to the shop, gave him me bag and I went and got his lunch. Not a story you needed to know, but I just want to tell you about the stress of carrying 
20 of these things on your back because they get heavy. They get heavy. So we went to Point and Library. Point and Library arranged by Sue and Jen and it was fantastic. Um, quite a few people there. I work in Point and now so a lot of people were there um, who I know from the shop. We were talking, we were interacting and it was a great time and I really like it when people ask questions and we can interact about my book. I also like the fact that I can share tea and coffee because really there is nothing I like more in life than tea. That's it. When I first started going to the writers group I sent Joy, who was beginning it, who's now a good friend of mine, who helped me edit the book too, actually. Uh, um, I sent her a message, and in that message, it said, Will there be tea? Because that's it. That's all it takes to get me anywhere. If you wanted me to go and stay on a desert island, there probably wouldn't be tea. But if that's all I really need, tea in a tent, and I'm sorted. And then, then I went to Lancashire. I went to Garstang Library, and this is the furthest north I have ever taken Doris and it was the strangest experience I've ever had because the first lady to come in came in picked up the first book and began laughing and then just bought the two books there and then without me even having to speak or read the book and it was just a really nice thing that has never happened before and it made me feel like I was doing something right and then we had the reading usually I do a reading and then we break at ha the halfway point in the hour and we do a question and answer session but this time we just went the way through interacting asking question answering questions and talking about the book reading from both books and a fun time was had by all and now I feel extremely confident about this second book because as I said in previous videos I was really terrified with book two because the humour is different and there is more of a focus on the ensemble cast rather than just the two individual characters and I was really terrified that people weren't going to like it as much as I like it but it seems that people do enjoy Doris and they do, do enjoy her tales and I don't I can now go to places and not have to say well my mother enjoys it because you know Everybody loves the mother, but she's not a really good um, judge of character, is she? No. She's got to be kind to you. Even if you go out and you're like, I don't know, murder a kitten, your mother's got to be kind to you. I think. I think that's the way it works. Don't worry, I'm not going murdering any cats, I'm allergic. So Garstang was arranged by Mark Trent, and I'm very grateful to him. And really, this was also to shout out the librarians who have been extremely helpful in helping me to get my book out there. And that was just the first week of events, and I've now got a free week, because I just wanted to focus on my test this week. Um, then next week I will be doing Congleton Library, Holmes Chapel Library, a open mic night run by Margaret Holbrook at Rems in Chapel on the Frith. Then I will be doing my big launch party at Macclesfield Library and then I get some more time off and then we start this all again. And the events are kind of arranged so that I do everything in one week, get a week off, everything in one week, week off. And it seems to be working at this point. I've not yet fallen in con unconscious but I have been consuming a lot of Costa coffee. We'll find out if that's to my detriment at Weight Watchers tomorrow. This was just bragging, really. This was just to tell you about how the first week of our Doris has gone. We... the sun's gone now. The sun has just decided we can't be bothered with this. Um, but yeah, first week of Indisputably Doris has gone really well and I'm exceptionally grateful to the people that have been supporting me and helping me to get the book out there. I know I, did th I said this in the release video, and you get it now, and you'll probably get it next week after I've done another week of events. Anyway, if you have any questions about my book, or how to get in touch with libraries, if you would like me to get in touch with your library, feel free to leave a message in the comments. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, that is all.